In this lesson, we're going to go over some practice problems associated with the index of refraction of a material and also Snell's law. So let's start with this problem. What is the speed of light in water? First, you need to know the speed of light in a vacuum or in empty space. And that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now what about in water? Well, the speed of light in a material is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction. And so the index of refraction for water is 1.33. So if we take 3 and divide it by 1.33, that's equal to 2.256 and then times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this is the speed of light in water. So as the index of refraction of a material increases, the speed of light in that material decreases. In a vacuum, the speed of light is 1, but in water it's 1.33, and light travels a lot slower in water than it does in a vacuum. So make sure you understand this relationship. Number 2. The speed of light in diamond is 1.24 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. What is the index of refraction of diamond? So let's use the same formula, V is equal to, I'm not sure what just happened there, but let's do that again. V is equal to C over N. And let's cross multiply, let's isolate N. So 1 times C is C, and then we have V times N. Now let's divide both sides by V. So the index of refraction is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in a material. So as we said before, the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the speed of light in diamond is 1.24 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we can cancel these two things. And so it's just going to be 3 divided by 1.24. So the index of refraction of diamond is about 2.42. And so that's the answer. Number three, the wavelength of light in a vacuum is 600 nanometers. What is the wavelength of light in glass? And we're given the index of refraction of glass, which is 1.5. So the wavelength of light in a material is going to be the wavelength of light in the vacuum divided by the index of refraction. So in this example, it's going to be 600 nanometers divided by 1.5. And so the wavelength of light in glass is going to be 400 nanometers. And so that's the answer. So another relationship that you want to keep in mind is that as the index of refraction increases, the wavelength in that material decreases. That is the wavelength of light that passes through that material. Number four, the wavelength of light in glass is 450 nanometers. What is the wavelength of this light in diamond? So what's the answer? Well, here's the formula that we need to know. Lambda two divided by lambda one is equal to N one over N two. So let's say that N1 is 1.5. So that's for glass. So the wavelength that corresponds to that is 450 nanometers. Now N2, which is going to be for diamond, is 2.42. We're looking for the wavelength in diamond. So lambda 1 is going to be 450 nanometers. N1 is 1.5. N2 is 2.42. And notice that diamond has a higher index of refraction than glass. So therefore, the wavelength should be lower. As we said before, if the index of refraction increases, the wavelength decreases. So we should expect an answer that's less than 450 nanometers. Let's cross multiply. So 450 times 1.5 is 675. And so that's equal to lambda 2 times 2.42. Now let's divide both sides by 2.42. So lambda 2, the wavelength that corresponds to diamond, is 675 divided by 2.42. And so that's going to be approximately 
nanometers if you round it to the nearest whole number. And you can see it's a lot less than 450. Number five, light strikes an air water boundary with an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. What is the angle of refraction of the refracted light ray in water? So let's say this is water and above we have air, below we have water. And here we have the normal line. So light strikes the air water boundary at an angle of incidence of 30. Now the, keep in mind the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray, which is this light ray, and the normal line. So we need to calculate the angle of refraction. Let's call this theta r. So we could use Snell's law. n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So the index of refraction for air is almost the same as a vacuum. It's approximately 1. And for water, it's 1.33. So let's say that n1 is 1. So theta 1 has to be 30 degrees. n2 is going to be 1.33. And so now let's calculate theta 2. So let's divide both sides by 1.33. Sine 30 is 1 half. And half divided by 1.33, that's 0 0.3759. And so that's equal to sine theta 2, or theta r for the angle of refraction. So to calculate the angle of refraction, we need to take the arc sine or the inverse sine of 0.3759. And so the angle of refraction is 22 degrees. Now notice what happens as light travels from a material with a low index of refraction to a material with a high index of refraction. So as n increases, Notice that the angle decreases. The angle of incidence was 30, but the angle of refraction is 22. And so the light ray moved closer to the normal line. So anytime light travels from a low index of refraction to a material with a high index of refraction, the light ray is going to bend closer to the normal line. And now let's say if it goes in reverse, if it moves from a material with a high index of refraction to a material with a low index of refraction, then the angle is going to increase and so the light ray is going to bend away from the normal line. So that's just a simple fact to keep in mind. Number six, a light ray travels from air into glass with an angle of incidence of 60 degrees. The light ray continues to travel through the glass material into diamond. At what angle does the light ray make with the normal line as it enters the diamond material? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the glass. And this is the diamond material. So we have air, glass, and diamond. So let's draw the normal line. So the incident ray is going to strike the air glass boundary at an angle of 60 degrees. So what is the angle of refraction? So let's call this theta 1, that's 60 degrees. So what's theta 2, which is between the normal line and the incident ray? So we can use this formula, n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, Snell's law. n1, that's the index of refraction of air. And then we're going to multiply that by sine 60, and that's equal to n2, which is the index of refraction of glass. And for diamond, I forgot to give it to you, but based on the previous problem, you know it's 2.42. Now let's calculate theta 2. So it's going to be sine 60, which is the square root of 3 over 2, or 0.866, divided by 1.5. And so that's going to be 0.57735. And so that's equal to sine theta. So theta 2 
is going to be the arc sine or inverse sine of that answer. So theta 2 is 35.3 degrees rounded to the nearest tenth. Now, let's make another normal line. You need to realize that the angle of refraction for the first boundary is equal to the angle of incidence for the second boundary. And to see that, let's draw the two normal lines. And so here is the first boundary and here is the second boundary. So let's say this, we have this angle of refraction, which should be a straight line. So let's do that again. So let's say this is 40, for example. Let's say that was theta 2, just to keep things simple. This has to be 40 as well. Notice that we have two parallel lines, and so these are alternate interior angles. Or, if you turn this into like a, a square or a rectangle, you can see that this is 90, this is 90. This has to be 50, this has to be 50. And so this has to be 40. So you need to know that the angle of refraction for the first boundary equals the angle of incidence for the second boundary. And so the angle of refraction in the second boundary, that's going to be theta 3. And that's what we're looking for. At what angle does the light ray make with the normal line, here's the normal line, as it enters the diamond material? So let's calculate theta 3. So it's going to be n2 sine theta 2, which is equal to n3 sine theta 3. Now n2 for glass, that's 1.5. And theta 2 is 35.3. For diamond, n3 is 2.42. And so it's going to be 1.5 sine 35.3 divided by 2.42. And so that's equal to 0.358. 2. So theta 3 is going to be arc sine of 0.3582. And so the third angle is about 21 degrees if you round it to the nearest whole number. So this is the answer that we're looking for. Now it turns out that you really don't need to use theta 2 in order to get theta 3 you can skip the stuff in the middle. So for example, we know that Snell's law is this equation, n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, which is also equal to n3 sine theta 3, if the light ray continues to travel. So we can set this part equal to this part. So all we need to know is the angle of incidence and the index of refraction of air theta 3 and the index of refraction of diamond. We really don't need to know what the light does in between. So for example, n1 is 1, theta 1 is 60, n3 is 2.42. So sine 60 divided by 2.42, that's going to give us this number 0.35786, and that's equal to sine theta 3. So theta 3 is going to be arc sine of that number. And so this will give you 20.97 degrees, which is approximately 21 degrees. And so that's a faster way in which you can get the same answer. Number 7. A light ray strikes material with an index of refraction of 1.2, and it strikes it from air at an incident angle of 70 degrees, as shown in the figure below. What is the angle x in which the light ray leaves the material? So first, let's calculate theta 2. Now this time, we can't just skip to this step. We have to calculate the angle in the middle, because the direction of the normal line changes. In the last example, the two normal lines were both parallel. In this example, they're perpendicular to each other. 
So let's use the first formula, n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, Snell's law. So n1, we're dealing with air, so that's 1, and then the incident angle is 70 degrees, and 2 is 1.2. So let's calculate the angle of refraction. So it's sine 70 divided by 1.2, and so that's going to be 0.7831. So theta 2 is going to be arc sine of 0 0.7831. And so that angle is 51.5 degrees. Now let's focus on this triangle. Well, let's make it into a triangle. So theta 2 is 51.5. And here we have a right angle. And so this other angle is complementary to this angle. So it's going to be 90 minus 51.5. So this angle is about 38.5. Or let's say if you don't want to round it much. It's really 38.45 if you want a more accurate answer. So let's call this angle theta 3. So now let's calculate x. So we could use Snell's law again. So n3 sine theta 3 is equal to n4 sine theta 4 or sine x. So n3 is still 1.2 because the light ray is still in the material. And the new angle is now complementary to theta 2, so that's 38.45 degrees. n4, we're back in air, so that's 1. And so it's going to be 1.2 times sine 38.45. And so that's 0.7462. So that's equal to sine of x. So x is going to be the arc sine of 0.7462. So x is 48.3 degrees. And so that's the final answer. That's how you can calculate this angle.